In 2015 alone, over $120 billion worth of diamonds were exported around the world. And to manage the massive value of these tiny stones, the industry relies on paper certificates and receipts, which can be easily lost or tampered with. In an industry with a real risk of fraud and a history of human rights abuse, understanding the origin and authenticity of diamonds is paramount. A system to do that, being developed by technologists right here in London, is one example of the innovations being created using the technology behind Bitcoin. Now, some of you may know Bitcoin as a digital currency used for trading, or maybe you've heard it's been used to purchase illicit goods on the dark web. In exploring emerging technologies, one of my favorite aspects is when I get to look at how technology can be used to benefit society. And while Bitcoin as a digital currency is really interesting, the applications of its core technology extend much further. So in exploring the benefits, I'd like to talk to you about the technology underlying Bitcoin, blockchain. This technology may not only change how we transfer value, but could dramatically shift our systems of trade, identity, and governance. And one of the aspects that's most interesting is how it can make these systems more transparent. Now, blockchain systems are often considered technical and complicated to explain. So to try to broadly explain the concept here, I'd like to talk to you about marbles. So imagine all of us here trades marbles, but in our marble trading world, we're starting to see a few issues. Some people have been trading and stealing other people's marbles. Some people have been trying to trade the same marble to two people. So we decided to resolve these kinds of disputes. We need a type of system. So we went to the traditional systems. We asked our friend Tommy if he can keep track and keep a ledger of those transactions. But suddenly Tommy finds that people have been offering him bribes to change that database or they are trying to hack into his computer. And also Tommy's only human, so sometimes he just makes mistakes. So we decide that together we need to come up with a new system. And we each start taking note of every trade. Once a minute, we fill a page, send what we think has happened to everyone else, and as a group, we agree what trades took place. We continue to do this minute after minute, noting and agreeing these trades, gradually building up a shared record book where we know the data recorded is what should be there. This record book shows every transaction that has ever happened in chronological order, and we each hold an exact copy of it. Because of the way the pages are bound together, trying to go back and change past trades would be practically impossible. And because we each hold a copy of it, we would know if something went wrong. This shared record book is essentially a blockchain. A blockchain is a distributed, immutable ledger, or record of transactions. Distributed means that it's shared and stored in multiple locations, removing a single point of failure and providing visibility across multiple participants. Immutable means that it's near impossible to go back and change the past records once they have been agreed by the participants and secured using cryptography. From there, there's a number of different ways that you can design blockchain systems. They can be public, meaning the ledger is openly available for anyone to view online, or private, visible only to certain participants. There can be different ways of achieving consensus or agreeing how trades get added to the record book. And some systems, like Bitcoin, are decentralized, meaning there's no single owner or controller of the ledger. Now, to put it very simply, a blockchain is essentially a shared database. I realize this may not sound revolutionary at first, but it's a new type of shared database. One which allows us to link data together in a provable way. By its design, blockchain technology means no longer having to blindly trust third parties. Instead, they're replaced by mathematics and shared software. Blockchain technology can remove the middlemen. It enables the sharing of information in a secure way, and it provides a single point of truth, 
but without having to rely on a single entity to ensure that truth. Considering we're living in a post-truth world, having a verifiable source of truth, which isn't controlled by any one party, could be extremely important. When I started to immerse myself in the blockchain space, I had a sense of deja vu. It brought me back to the early 90s when I started using the internet. Not yet user-friendly and mainly frequented by a mix of academics and nerds, but we were also a growing community who shared a common belief. That this technology, though not yet well understood by everyone, should be open and accessible to all. Blockchain shares similar ideological underpinnings, built around the desire to give individuals back control. In the first instance, to free themselves from having to trust the banks and governments who have repeatedly breached that trust. The recent example of the global financial crisis coincided, and many think not coincidentally, with the launch of Bitcoin in 2009. Blockchain technology not only puts more power back in the hands of individuals, but by design, it provides unprecedented opportunity for transparency. And why is this important? Transparency and freedom of information are increasingly being recognized as a human right. They address this imbalance of power in which we have access to very little information about governments or corporations, but thanks to our dependency on our mobile phones, we hand them over, whether we know it or not, and completely free of charge, nearly every data point in our daily lives. Transparency allows us to hold these governments and corporations to account and helps to expose corruption, an issue which costs the global economy as much as $2 trillion every year and undermines our trust in our political and economic systems and institutions. Blockchain technology was born out of this lack of trust, and it's a tool for this transparency. Let me share three examples of how blockchain technology is being used to create a more transparent and therefore more just, informed, and empowered society. The world's population is reaching seven and a half billion, making land an increasingly scarce and precious commodity and an increasing target for corruption. Records of ownership, which are immutable and audible, could not only be used as a tool against this, but could unlock trapped economic opportunity. Initiatives in countries including Georgia, Sweden, Ghana, and the US are exploring how blockchain-based systems could be used to enhance land title registries. And this could help to ensure that land remains with its rightful owner. Another area are supply chains. The authenticity and origin of the goods we buy helps determine their value, their quality, even their safety. From diamonds to artwork to consumer goods, technologists are exploring how blockchain-based systems could be used to trace product journeys. One of these startups is Provenance, and they've built a platform that allows brands and industries such as food and drink, fashion and cosmetics, to track products along the supply chain, providing consumers with verifiable information about product history and creation. Not only does this help us as consumers make more informed choices about what we buy, it creates a network of real-time data which allows, to which allows us to prevent fraud, contamination, and other supply chain risks. A third area where blockchain technology is being explored to provide transparency is voting. Securities exchanges are looking into how blockchain-based systems can be used in voting platforms, allowing shareholders to observe and participate in annual meetings. And various groups around the world are looking at how blockchain systems can be used for elections, helping to enable audits and reduce fraud. Of course, the voting example also calls to mind some of the potential risks, here specifically for voter privacy. Demanding transparency from our systems and institutions should in no way conflict with our right for privacy as individuals. So in designing these types of systems, privacy, security, and system integrity become extremely important. Now some of you may be thinking, 
I hear about blockchain all the time. Everybody wants a blockchain, everybody has a blockchain, they're definitely coming, we just need to wait for them, right? Well, clearly I'm gonna say yes. <laughs> And today, change is usually happening faster than most people expect. But blockchain technology is still early stage, and there is still a lot to learn about its potential applications. In addition to the opportunities that I've mentioned, there's also challenges like scalability, interoperability, and as mentioned, privacy and confidentiality. So together with the potential benefits, we're working on understanding the potential risks. And also different systems will of course have different design priorities, not all of which are going to include transparency. To date, much of the focus in this space has been on the use of blockchain technology in the financial sector. Achieving the necessary cooperation for a successful blockchain integration in financial services is an impressive first step. And the opportunity to bring transparency to financial services is incredibly exciting. Naturally, it's also very complex, both for market and regulatory reasons. But maybe it's also just that today, siloed systems, lack of transparency, and therefore lack of power of the individual is our status quo. And technologies like blockchain technology are providing us with the opportunity to challenge the status quo. It's allowing us to prove transparency. It's changing how we think about data ownership and control. And born of an open source project, it's an example of the important advancements which come from open innovation. Now, just as with the internet, Ensuring proper governance, incentives, and a commitment to openness are key. It might be really hard to imagine today, but the internet would be a very different and arguably much less useful tool had it remained a collection of intranets, closed off to the diversity and freedom of expression we see today. Blockchain technology, open systems, and transparency can bring enormous benefits to markets, to science, to democracy. But it's up to us as citizens and consumers to demand this type of transparency in order to provide the incentives for these systems to exist. We must also participate. Consensus-based trust means that stakeholders need to help to run the systems. So we need to align our incentives and engage. And as technologists, we need to understand the implications that, te that the technology we build can have on humanity. And we should enable systems which benefit us all, not just the few. Blockchain technology may serve as a powerful tool for opening access to information, for empowering individuals, and for automating trust. And in these early days, as blockchain technology begins to embed the financial institutional and cultural systems of our society, let's take this opportunity to make those systems be more open, inclusive, and transparent. Thank you.